this video will show the delivery and installation of the last shed in our cluster of goat sheds. I just cannot say enough about the care and precision of Llewellyn and Dorvin of Ridgeview Mini Barns. These first clips are from the day before they delivered that shed. One of the reasons we wanted this covered deck is to have another way to segregate our goats. I'll be cutting these panels so they can be temporarily mounted around the deck. When the fence is going up, our goats need to stay in here to be out of everybody's way. I've cut the panels, we'll put them up later. Our plan is to use these taller cattle panels on the sides and double up the shorter hog panels along the front. One of these sections up front will be put on temporarily with carabiners, so they'll be very easy to put on and take off. That way we can go in and out and put food in and out. We can just take maybe the top panel off to put some hay in there. That way the goats are still contained. Hopefully it'll work. This is all an experiment, so we'll see how it goes. We're waiting for the guys to show up with that second shed. We're expecting some rain, so I've set up a little umbrella system with my tripod, so the camera can stay dry if it starts raining pretty hard. We've needed rain, so it's good to get it, but I wish it wasn't right during this window when they're supposed to show up with our shed. And I'm not worried about that light anyway, so it's not that big a deal.
Like I said, it hasn't rained much. Yeah, yeah, we we lucked out with the weather here. It's just the slightest little sprinkle. go your way just a little bit. They'll stop when they get to the uh, bank. We're going to have to shift that over. I know, that's going to shift over, then that's going to bring this together. That's close enough then. Yeah. Too close. We have uh, three inches. Go three inches once. Little bit. Okay, we're about an inch away. You can go a little bit more if you need. We will let this down off those blocks in a little bit, so I'll bring it just a tad closer. A little bit. Okay, let's stop with that. Might be tough to get it in here, but at least when it's in here, we know it's right. Say that again, so uh, everybody knows how well it was uh, positioned and well, okay, it Prepared. looks like a good level spot for a good building to set. Perfect. Yeah. I don't know what you're going to put in here, but my, I tell you what, you just put in a little bit of gravel or whatever, and this is going to be super nice. Yeah, nice. Well done. Well done. Well done. I tell you what, look at that. It just sets down there so pretty. I like it. I highly recommend Ridgeview Mini Barns if you need any outbuildings. Their contact info will be in this video description. I'm really happy with how this jog ended up working out. It looks very intentional right next to this jog. Let's take another look at our youngest chickens. We can't keep calling them baby chickens. They've really grown up over the series of videos of getting ready for the goat buildings. Adolescent chickens are called pullets. They graduated from the crumbles to this pellet food.
I will need to dig out this grass a little bit. So the door will open and this tree is definitely going to have to be trimmed back to accommodate that fence. But before we do that, let's go ahead and get those panels up. Four of these clips will hopefully be strong enough to hold these panels in place. The idea to get this panel on and off is to just pry it back a little, slip it off. The idea for this clip configuration is to just make the door panel a little quicker and easier to come on and off. All the panels are up. We used a double row here in front because some of our goats might be able to jump it if we just used one. The two panels are connected together with a series of these kind of clips. There are feeders in there and there's water in the stalls for them. I had to entice the goats in with some grain. We'll see if it contains them. To go in or out, you can unlatch the two top clips Fold that top panel down and then just step over. Or you can unlatch the two side clips and just squeeze in. I was digging out grass in front of the new shed's door when I heard a bit of a, a ruckus over here. Our goats pushed against the panel and were able to separate it from these clips. So clearly four clips isn't enough. I'll have to put in some more. See it's a little bent out and completely off. It's getting towards the end of the day. I did dig out in front of this shed door. The goats have not escaped since I reinforced those panels. So far so good. Still keeping an eye on it. It's a little bit I'm a little bit dubious about it because those clips aren't very strong, but like I said, so far so good. We'll leave it and see how they do. I've started figuring out post placement using this long extension cord and some little pieces of rebar. This approximates the spacing for our gates so we can figure out the post placement for them. I haven't figured it all out yet, but I'll get there before they need to put those posts in. During feeding time, our goats got a little excited and clearly have pushed this panel right away from where it should be. So I'm going to have to find a more heavy duty way of attaching these panels. I'll work on that tomorrow. We're definitely at the end of today for daylight. So I'm going to call it a day. This space behind the new shed works out great. I just needed enough room to walk back here. The space on the side between the two goat sheds 
does present a potential problem though. I'll try not to show any spoilers. I'm filming this after all of the fencing work has been done. I'm just wearing the same shirt for continuity as when the shed was delivered. We wanted this gap to be just as narrow as possible. But of course now it will be impossible to pull weeds back there. My original intention was to just pile in a deep layer of gravel to block the weeds. And I'll still do that. But first I'm going to use some extra quickcrete from the fence post holes to create a sloping layer of concrete between the dirt and that gravel. You can see there's already some concrete down in there. When the guys were cleaning up from that fencing job, I asked them to put any extra concrete back in there just to give me a little bit of a head start. I'll be working from both ends with a hoe so I can reach back far enough and move and smooth out the concrete. I had two bags of quickcrete left over and I used it all in here. I think it looks pretty good. I didn't end up using that hoe. I just used my small shovel. The shape of this shovel was just better suited to rounding off the trough and smoothing it out. I tried to make this end a little bit higher than that end so water will flow that way. The, the natural inclination of the land is to flow that direction. The pad for the building was perfectly level so I could have gone either direction but I figured just send the water the way it had been going before. Right here at the end, it does sort of taper off and slope back down this way. So just a little bit of a high spot right inside that gap. We're expecting several days of rain starting the end of this week. So I'm glad to have this done. Once this concrete has set up, I'll just scoop in a bunch of gravel and that'll be that. 